physicians have been trained in scientific risk benefit decisions for our patients and for the public. That means all people. To do this currently, we try to use good data, <clears throat> for example, from randomized control studies and process it through multiple computer models. Science also requires peer review and collaboration to manage unbiased decision making. Because COVID-19 risk is new and so contagious and lethal, we're prioritizing its solutions as quickly and as safely as possible. We three physicians agree that our church leadership is using good scientific data to inform decisions about safely opening our church. I'm happy to be a member of a church that continues to learn. Well, I think number one, we need to wait to hear from what our governor of Ohio says. You know, they have had great guidelines and have really established a, um, have, have really, you know, taken us through this crisis very well and made Ohio be relatively safe. However, you know, we need to continue to follow their advice on how many people can be in one area for many reasons, for contact tracing, as well as to um, keep our, our community safe. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, one of the guiding principles for me as I sort of think about this is, you know, um, we've done a great job in the state as, as Allison said, um, but I also think it's important that, you know, we think about what our responsibility is to our community. Um, you know, there is an exemption from a lot of these regulations for religious gatherings, but my personal take is that we should treat ourselves like any other, you know, business or, um, or institution in the community. Um, and, and because there are many ways of meeting and worshiping that, we should really focus on when the public health officials say it's safe for all to resume large gatherings. Um, right now, the limitations for in-person gatherings are uh, 10 people or less. Um, there's talk that maybe by the end of the month, we may be allowed to resume gatherings of 50 or less. Uh, and I think that the, um, you know, following their guidance and the guidance of the diocese and the presbytery makes, makes a lot of sense. I feel like an outdoor one can be uh, tailored to really be inclusive as well as keep people socially distant. I have seen some um, other outdoor gatherings that have been done very well and people were socially distant. And I feel like if we can communicate to our parishioners how they can be socially distant, but still be together, that we can have a very successful event. Um, we just need to be sure that we're all following the same guidelines as well as respecting each other's space. Some people are more um, tolerant or risk averse or, you know, <laughs> risk tolerant than others. And we need to respect each other. Mm -hmm. And, but one good thing is that being outside, it does decrease your risk of transmission because the air is circulated around and move farther away from you. And keeping your six feet is, you know, is key as well, Charlie. So, um, so as we were talking about sort of the advantages of outdoor worship um, are several in the sense that airflow is much more natural. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about recirculating air. Um, it's safer to, you know, to be in, in togetherness without being physically close. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the, the privilege of having an outdoor space we can gather in safely. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to some gatherings as well that you know, they'll set up markers for people in a field to say, here's how far apart every household should be. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you're there, you know, um, you can be with your household close and be with others kind of from a distance. Um, so I think with the summer, um, it's, it's a natural time to try and do that as a first step to get us back together without being physically together. Um, at the same time, we'll still need to have masks available um, for entry and egress. So when you're, you know, like you would at the grocery store or like mm -hmm. you would um, anywhere else uh, to wear a mask when you might come in close contact with others and avoid, um, you know, you know, we'd love to shake hands and, and do that sort of stuff, but avoiding <laughs> physical contact will still be key. So, um, the harder part too is going to be for the kids. It's going to be new and different for the children. Uh, it's, it's harder. Kids don't do this as well as adults. Um, they're, it's just harder for them. And so uh, anyone with, uh, with small children um, is going to need to be mindful of that. And it's, <laughs> there's no easy answers here. 
Um, I know, you know, our kids are excited about seeing new faces too, but I'll, you know, we're trying to create an environment that's as safe as possible uh, because I, I don't, I also don't want the church to become a, a, a vector. Um, gathering together shouldn't, shouldn't put stress on individuals with health issues or put stress on the community. So it's very important that we do this responsibly. Mm -hmm. Right. And we need to encourage people to look at their risk tolerance. And if they don't feel that they can come, don't come. Like, we want you to be safe, you know? This is a choice. We are learning every day. I say that yeah. in my practice when we, each morning, I'm like, well, this is the plan today. If it goes great and we like it, we'll continue doing it. But we might have to adjust tomorrow, you know? Right. We have to do our best. Right, and we can't come up with a clear timeline. If you're looking for a timeline, it's not, we don't set the timeline. It's the virus and our response to it set the timeline. So, right. um, and every every move we make takes a couple weeks to see if it was a good idea or not. Yeah, at least. <laughs> at least. So, um, you know, I think, I think we're doing we're doing um, the best that we can to yeah. keep the congregation together and keep us keep the congregation and the staff safe. Right. And, um, and I think I think we've been presented with some disinformation, you know, which is generally narrow, uh, um, sort of narrow uh, self-interest kind of groups uh, groups that are coming in from the uh, 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 outsides, you know, to argue their particular uh, view, you know, and they're very loud, and so. Of course, uh, we, you know, we're all, all four of us, you know, are, are quite experienced in trying to deal with that. Vestry session will decide on a date in the coming weeks to have an outdoor worship uh, opportunity. The kind of things that will be involved will be uh, sign up um, and will social distance will have will require masks bring your own chair or blanket uh we will not have singing we will not have uh crowd or congregational responses that you might be norm uh used to in normal worship um but you will be able to see each other from six feet and <laughs> interact as much as possible and you know stay home if you're feeling ill i've been in contact with anybody feeling ill mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. At this point, too, as we're getting up to speed on this, you know, it's worth reiterating, the playgrounds are still going to be closed. That's a state order. Um, and because of the sanitation requirements, we won't have access to the indoor facility right now. Um, so that means restrooms uh, and that sort of thing won't be part of this either, which will make it a shorter experience as well. Uh, and and we'll have a PA system so that there won't be, you know, that the Stephen or whoever else is presiding over the service will be able to use a normal voice and the PA will do the projection. Right. Um, and that'll be set up a distance from, from uh, folks gathered as well. You'll see markers out on the lawn um, or paint out on the lawn to show appropriate spacing between households. And, you know, if you've been in, everyone sort of has their circle of people that they've been, or at least we have a circle of people we've been in close contact with, my immediate family, and, you know, those people can be in close distance sharing a space but if you haven't been seeing someone for you know months, um, you know continue to 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 see them from a distance. We will have to mark off space in the sanctuary. We'll have to limit the size of the congregation. We'll have to uh, have people sign up to come and wear masks, and it will be a very different worship experience than you're used to. Um, we will have to do deep cleaning before and after the service. Well, there'll be no, no nursery, no uh, Sunday school, right. um, child care providing. Uh, you'll have to ideally, you know, sanitize your hands when you come in and when you come out. And as soon as you get home, also wash your hands. You know, don't touch your face and wear your mask. Yeah, it'll, it'll look, you know, vastly different from what we remember um, until we know that this is over with. Um, so singing uh, is known to have a high risk of transmitting the virus. And so we won't have group singing, unfortunately. Um, we will not be doing sacrament, commu sa the communion sacrament until it's been cleared by the leadership of the Episcopal um, Diocese and the Presbytery. That's still um, not, not gonna be part of our worship. Passing the peace would be a distant greeting, not shaking hands. Um, offering plates, we'd go full virtual, again, to avoid passing 
um, object between us. And we'll be using uh, either a um, one-time paper or uh, probably maybe devices as well. So there have been some um, practices that are part of going to church that may need to change, you know, um, without the ability to provide nursery or childcare, uh, children are there, they, you know, will need ways to, to entertain themselves through the entirety of the service. And so, um, you know, that may, that may involve, um, you know, different tools to help them like uh, iPads or other, other, you know, books and things like that. But again, it won't be able to be shared between people. Um, so it'll be different, it'll be shorter, um, and we'll need to rely on everyone to use their own judgment too. If you're at higher risk from contract, from having a poor outcome, um, you know, we still support you and love you and, and, you know, everyone needs to look at their own risk tolerance, um, and decide if it's, if it's reasonable, we'll do everything we can to make it as safe as possible, but, um, but we can't completely eliminate, eliminate risks. Yeah, uh, coffee hour. We, you know, we have this uh, Zoom mechanism, for example, to discuss uh, uh, the sermon, for example, and uh, that uh, works even better than uh, than the coffee hour, I, I believe. Uh, if you can have a group that gets together, that groups together on the basis of of discussing some ideas, and then uh, that's even better. So. back to data, uh, we, we have to know <clears throat> what the risk of, of infection is in our community. Uh, and once, it, uh, once we have good data on that, we can say that the probabilities of somebody coming into an AA meeting or, or into our church is, is at some low level that we would consider to be normal, uh, normalized, you know. Uh, and uh, what that is, I don't know, you know, but uh, we have certainly normalized the uh, uh, flu, influenza, in a sense, and so we'll we'll do it with this too eventually when we get enough data, and and that includes knowing how much travel is going on and mixing of, of populations and so forth. That goes into the equation, and so it's it's complicated. It takes a long time to get that, that kind of confidence, scientific confidence. I guess one thing too, those groups. I mean, right now, still ten and under, you know, and. Technically, I guess they could get together and be separated in a big room, you know, 10, 10 or less people. It's up, I guess it's up to the church if we want to allow that. Because right. then we have to clean after for sure. Or yeah. they clean after. I don't know what the, the thing would be there. I mean, I think we would have to look at presuming that there need to be a deep cleaning, just like the would between our services. And some of it's going to be our, you know, our insurance carriers as well. Uh, I think as well as one of the changes from this pandemic is that work that can be done virtually um, should continue that way. And so if there's a support group um, that has the ability to meet virtually, uh, you know, we can certainly continue to support, sponsor them uh, in whatever way we can, but we may ask that they meet virtually when they can. Uh, and and um, especially if it's going to be a larger group, uh, no matter what, they need to be cleaning and universal masks, I think, for any public use and public meetings. Confirmation, I mean, confirmation is an example, right? So right. we can continue, maybe you touch on this, but we will continue doing that work at the church, but it will look different. And yeah. um, schools, same thing, are looking at how do we combine in-person and virtual um, connections to to use in-person meetings when they're helpful and necessary, and then use virtual meetings when you can do the work that way. I don't, I don't know about uh, uh, airflow inside rooms, inside the, uh, the air conditioning, turnover rates. What if uh, there's a viral, uh, you know, uh, concentration of such a, what, how, how long will it last? Anything? So, you know, when we've looked at this for the hospital and the yes. emergency department, um, you know, what matters for any infectious disease is the dose and duration of exposure. Mm -hmm. right? So if you're, you're at much higher risk of acquiring it, if you're in close contact and getting a lot of viral shedding on you, mm -hmm. um, this virus is unique in that viral shedding can happen with people who don't show symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, with the flu, we thought maybe a day or two beforehand, you might be able to shed virus without developing symptoms. You know, we're, we're still learning, but we're seeing people who have minimal symptoms or no mm -hmm. symptoms that have active viral shedding. 
right. um, from an airflow standpoint, that's why masking is so important. When you wear a mask, you're, you're, even if you're asymptomatic but contagious, your ability to infect others drops dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, none of the, the masks that we have made at home or any mask that's not an N95 prevents you from acquiring the infection. Mm -hmm. That's distancing. Mm -hmm. If you want to prevent yourself from acquiring the infection, you need to be keeping your distance and using um, an N95 plus or minus a face shield. Mm -hmm. But the masking uh, from, a, from a, a, a global standpoint is far more effective than thinking about airflow rates and sanitizing a, of the room because it's not recirculating air as much as direct contact. And that's surface cleaning too, where if you cough on a surface or expel particles on a surface, that's, that's think, another potential motive. That, the outdoors, indoors, that's what we're talking about. Really. No matter what we're doing in person, we're going to still offer the uh, Sunday worship video option because there will be some people for whatever reason don't feel comfortable coming to an in-person service. So we want to continue to uh, offer that. Um, and we will also be looking at other ways to allow folks to interact in the life of the church from a distance. And we'll be exploring some of that um, in the days and weeks ahead. church is a is a force for good in the world and a force for good in our family and our community and you know I've been really impressed with how we've been able to maintain a connection um, one of my guiding principles is that uh, showing that love though sometimes means staying away uh, and as much as I'd like to do something you know we've all had to cancel vacations and family activities um, to you know keep our distance from others and avoid spreading the virus and so I'm not looking to push the envelope with church to be aggressive because I think that, you know, doing right by the community is part of living out our, you know, our call to, to, um, to serve, to serve and to serve our community and others. So um, I know other people are making their own choices, but I, I'm focused on protection and prevention of the spread. People with chronic health conditions and the elderly the mortality rate for this virus is much higher than uh, than than some other age groups. Well, thank you all very much for your time today. Um, stay well, and we'll see you uh, hopefully in person outdoors soon, and if not, online.